Uh, yes, I did. But um, from uh, for me learning how to pass rush, I mean it was it, it was tough. But uh, when I opted out, that goes to back to me of learning my pros and cons. I mean my pros, what I'm a good run stopper, excellent run stopper. But I learned my cons. I, I need to work, learn how to pass rush, learn how to rush the pass, and learn how to get some more push. So I mean, when I went to uh, Exos in Dallas. Uh, me and my position coach, uh, Brandon Tucker, we uh, learned how to pass rush, learned how to be explosive out the hole, um, and just getting to the quarterback uh, efficient. So, I mean, uh, it, it was a good process, and I thank him for it. And uh, that really showed today, uh, working the big bags, um, showing I could really get off and rush the passer. What is good, everybody? What is good, everybody? It is Big Game James, and guess what? It's another session of Coach J Film Day, man. And uh, guess what we're doing today? We're doing Mr. Tyler Shelvin, man. Uh, we're going to do some film of him. And, uh, you know, he is being talked about because you see big run stuffer. You see that You see that size, six foot two. Um, 350 pounds, big, hand, nice size hands, arms is pretty nice, wingspan pretty good. I would expect you run up 40 at two, 350 pounds, 5.4. Five, four. I wouldn't expect you to be killing it, but big boy. Um, vertical jump 28.5. I think the biggest thing that showed to me that I didn't want to see, which I did want to see, was no bench press. I wanted to see him on that bench press. I didn't like that. Uh, I don't know if something was going on with that, but I really would have liked to have seen a bench press from him. Uh, that would have been a good gauge for me. Um, you see what uh, he was also, Tyler Shovin was an opt-out guy, was one of the who's who when he came out of high school. Going into LSU, I believe he was a five-star recruit, one of the top defensive linemen coming into college. 
had a little bit of a issue, you know, with the weight. Um, that's going to be plaguing him his whole, I think, his whole career in the NFL. Um, and I think that's one of the concerns every team is going to ask him, and that's one of my concerns because I think he ballooned up to almost 400 pounds early. Um, but you see what he did 2019. He had a little way of it. He really didn't become a starter until like mid-2018, and you've seen it kind of all came together in 2019 when they had their championship run. Uh, LSU had 39 tackles, uh, no no sacks, nothing like that, no um, anything more of right now, honestly, one-trick one pony. He's a zero or a one-tick, that's it. And I played that video to see where if he could ever – Get some pass rushing ability. Shout out to my dog, Brandon Tucker. You know, I had Brandon Tucker on here, and he said he was uh, training big, Tyler, and I want to give him a shout out on here. Um, and you see how he was training, and he still is. He's been with him since October, since he was an opt-out guy. The main reason why they said he was an opt-out guy, issues uh, with his family having COVID, his grandmother had COVID, and um, he really wanted to be around her, and he was she's a real big influence in his life. Um, so he decided to be an opt-out guy. So this is his 2019 tape, not his 2020 tape, because he opted out his 2019 tape. Um, ended up with 39 tackles, uh, was always getting double teamed. That's what you want from this guy. Command the double team. Command the double team. And we're going to jump into some tape right quick. I got some few plays that I like about him, some things that I feel like he can improve on just from my perspective, what I'm thinking um, in my head. And, uh, you know, I said in my old videos about 2018, these are players that I like. I don't know if these are players that you like, but these are players that I like that could be a player in Dallas. Now, if he can improve on pass rushing ability, that's going to be huge uh, because that's going to make him even a more asset with the Dallas Cowboys if he were to get drafted by them. I'll talk a little bit about that later at the end. But right now, to me, he's just a one-trick pony. Run stuffer, holding the point of attack, getting the double teams, what the Cowboys have missed and haven't had in eons. They haven't had a six foot two, 350-pounder in eons. So that would be a first in a very long time and a guy that can actually hold double teams in the league for us, for the Cowboys, because Dallas doesn't have that. This would be the first. And if he could do that, if they drafted him, he can keep those linebackers free because that has been an issue that run game in that middle, this is a guy that can do it. So let's go at some plays right quick that I kind of like and some, like I said, some improvements where he can get better. All right, so first you see right there, he's in the middle, big 72. This is a good uh, run play. Gets off the line quick. One of the things I do like about him, he does have good get off. Obviously, his power, you can't move him. He's a double team guy. And when he gets single, singled up with one man, it's a wrap. He's killing them. And you'll see in these plays where he's just throwing them away like they're like little kids, like he was grabbing me and just throwing me out the way. And these are big boys in the middle. So that's what you love. Got to have better awareness in the middle. Sometimes he doesn't keep his head up. i will show some plays where you got to be able to track the ball carrier. Sometimes he doesn't keep his head up to be able to track where the ball carrier is at and misses. Sometimes he comes up too high, negating that strength and power that he has. He has to stay low so he can get up underneath them and be able to track where the ball carrier is and see through the trash. But as I said before, main thing is keeping that weight in check. If he can keep that in check and continue to prove training with my guy Brandon and can add some pass rush ability, which he does show in a few ticks, then you're really excited about a Tyler Shelvin. Right now, other players I would like because they offer more but he's a particularly strong run stuffer. That's his thing. But if he can add some other things to his game, he can be an animal. So check this out. See, holding the point of attack, getting that tackle. You're not moving him with one guy. You're not. Even with two. As you can see him right here. Shelvin's right here. He's got a good quick get off. Keep that head searching where that ball carrier is, though, Shelvin, dog. Keep that eye tracking him because when you lose that eye, it negates. And people, and there's going to be a play where there's a quarterback sneak where you got to recognize that. But look right here. There, there's a quick, uh, quick hit in the back. You've seen when Tyrone Crawford was getting them hits in the back and them hips. That's where they hit you. You break you down right quick. So you hit him on that backside, make him bot his body drop a little bit so you can run off of him. But you see, that one man can't hold him. 72 right here. That one man can't hold him. And he threw him around like a rag doll a couple plays. But watch right here. Mm, get off me. Urgh. Look at that. 
That's what you, that's what Cowboys need right there. I'm saying, well, I'm not saying you draft him, but if there's a, a a what you need right there in the middle, that's what you need. That run stuff and that can hold that right there. Let's look at that again. Yeah, he takes that little hit, but look, he takes that hit, but he still ain't moving him. You see how he's moving him already. See how he has that head up, and there's a few plays. See how he has the head locating where the ball carrier is. That's what I want to see him do. And boom. Makes the play. I like that. All right, let's fast forward to this right here. Doesn't offer any pass rush ability right now. But that can change with training with Brandon Tucker. And if he can add that, because he shows some good get off on here. If he can add that, you feel good. Here we go right here. Shovel's right here over in the middle. Watch this play. Now, I don't like how the ball carrier took him an extra two or three yards to get the play. But what I do like is when you watch right here is that when he's one-on-one -on -one with somebody, you're not blocking him. You're not blocking him one-on-one. -on -one. You see him right here in the middle. He's a zero or one tech. Zero tech, you're right over the center one. You're sliding in that between that center and the guard. So he was flexing, but in that LSU uh, defense, it looks like they ran a lot of three, four, so you're going to be more head up. And it looks like they were more running two gapper. So you're going to hold up that man, and you're going to be cognizant on your left and right in that A gap. So – um, you're shooting either gap, but you're holding up that point of attack and see when they're going from where otherwise on that uh, one gap. You're just shooting that gap, getting to that ball carrier as quick as you can. You don't have to think so much. You don't have to kind of read as much. But look right here. You're going to slide back over in the middle. Boom. Now look at that. See where the head's at on that inside? He's on the outside, but look where his head is at. He's already seeing where the ball carrier is at. He's already got his head up, and he came in low. So he's already winning right there. Now look, see how he comes up underneath him, stays low, able to get his arms out quicker than the offensive lineman. So now he's keeping him with his head up, so now he's seeing where that ball carry is. And that's where they run that two-gap system at LSU, where they are running at LSU. So he's holding up that offensive lineman, that center. Now he's seeing which way he's going to go. But you see, this man is not blocking him. Look at that. See how he just throws them off of him? Makes the play. Let's see the whole play again. Let's see the whole play. Um, right here. Watch him slide back over here in the middle. It was over the center. Boom. Hit him. Slide him up. Bam. Make the tackle. You want to make him not let get any yards, but once again, you're not winning that one-on-one. -on -one. See it one more time. See him holding up the point of attack. You're not winning one-on-one -on -one with him. That center didn't have a chance. And there's a couple other plays. I just like looking at it so you can see it again. Right directly over the center, boom. Coming up underneath him, head already up, being able to locate where the ball carrier is, standing him up, and then boom, releasing from him, making the play. Now, there's going to be a play where he doesn't recognize, and I want him to be able to recognize, and it's going to be, let's see. Here we go. I think this is it right here. Now watch this play. Quarterback comes out, and this is – I don't know if this is a, this is a third or fourth down, but this is inches, right? So you got to recognize that the quarterback is going to come. Watch how he comes under center right quick. Okay, you got to recognize that. So if he's coming under center, this could be a sneak or a quick run. Look how far back that uh, running back is. So this could be a quick sneak. At the line, you got to recognize this as the tackle. This is where I was talking about, the awareness. See, he comes in, and he comes right off that the, the side of him. Now, watch this. <clears throat> watch it from this angle as you see Shelvin right here. Now, watch this. Now, right here immediately, he's under center. Shelvin right here, his head is on the inside. So, he's got that A gap right here. He should be shooting this. Now, usually, if this is just a regular run play, he can be responsible for either one of these gaps. Okay. Because he's just going head up. But right here, the, the quarterback comes under center. His head is on the inside. He's got to shoot this gap and stop this play. If he shoots this gap, because that man can't block him, and he's quick enough to shoot that gap, he stops this play. But what happens is he doesn't do it. 
Now, see, look right here. Look where he, when he comes off the ball. When he comes off the ball right here, look where his head is at. That man has already beat him. That guard has already beat him to the inside. So that that right there, they're winning right here. Both of these line, both of these linebackers are free, but with his head going to the outside instead of the inside to be able to locate where that quarterback is, he already lost. So he can't locate where he is because his head is on the outside. He's not on the inside. So right there, that guard has already won, and he comes up high. As you can see right here, he stands him up. So by him standing up, number one, he does not locate the ball carry. He doesn't see where the play is at. And you see the quarterback comes right underneath that center, and they get like two yards on the play. Look at that. He died. He's not even involved on the tackle. So that's why I'm saying, and there's a couple other plays I've seen in here where he's got to have that awareness, where he's got to be able to have his head down and see. Now, and, on, and after this play, the next play, he actually comes down and does see it. So – Want to get better awareness, want to be able to see that quicker, um, but it's the consistency, I think, because on the next play, he does make the play. So let's go to this. Yeah, see right there. See, he made that play. Now watch this. Different, different, different way right here. Here you go, shoving right here again. Now watch this play. Boom. See that? Look where his head is at. He's already recognizing the play. See where his head is at? He's already recognizing where that guard is coming. So he's already up, head already up, staying low. He's already recognizing where this block is coming from. That's what we're talking about, the awareness. Boom. Comes into him. Okay, now his head is on the inside so he can recognize where this ball carrier is going and he can stop this play. And he's already got good penetration already from the beginning. All right, and you can see his brute strength. Okay, one-on-one, -on -one, not blocking this guy. Look at that, boom. Just throws him off like a rag doll. Get out the way. <clears throat> Make the play. Look at that again. That's what you want to see. Watch this again. Oh, I'm gonna get that back because I want to see the. Let's just let's just play the whole play. Throws him off like a rag doll. Uh, gets in him. Get off of me. Too easy. Look at that. He just threw that dude like he wasn't even there, man. Let's see it again. I like how he. Now that's 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 what you want. That's what that's what you need in that middle. Look at that. Head up. Mm, look at that. Just throwing him around like he ain't even there. That's that power. That's that strength. That's why I wanted to see him on that bench press and see what he was really throwing up. But 350, that's a solid 350. And he could get bigger. But right now he's been doing good keeping that weight. But that's 350, dog. You're not stopping that. Look at that. Great play right there. Now let me show you where he could show some pass rushing in here. If he can master some of this. Okay, now Tyler Shevin, we really feeling good about you, dog. We really feeling good about you. But let's show you this play right here. Not this one. This one coming up. And he blows up this whole damn play. Just blows it all the way up. Watch this right here. This is where you can see some pass rushing ability. Right here. He's over that middle. Like I said, he's always over that center or in that A gap because he ain't doing nothing else. He's not a three. He's a zero or a one tech run stuffer. But if he can get that pass rushing, dog, now you got something. 350-pound behemoth that can pass rush, now you're talking. And you ain't like a 5'11". You're a full 6'2 and a half. So watch this. Look at that. Get off me. Could You see, he, quarterback didn't even know what the hell to do. He said, oh, shit. He's seen that big Gigantic truck coming after him. Big old Mack truck. Look at this right here. There he goes right here. Watch how he just blows this play up. It's beautiful. Watch this. What I tell you, one-on-one -on -one ain't nobody blocking him. Look at that. See? Look at the head up. That's what we want to see. Already hand, hands, hands extended because now he head up, hands extended, staying low. You're not beating that. You're not beating that. He's too big for you, especially one-on-one. -on -one. He just stands that man up. Look at that. Throw him. Look at that. That center can't hold that. Throw him out the way. The running back, lucky he didn't get the ball because he was going to get smacked. Look at that. He was going to get smacked. Quarterback was running for his damn life. 
That's Tyler Shelvin doing that. That's Tyler Shelvin doing that. Now, if you can add that to your game, Tyler Shelvin, we really liking you over here if the Cowboys drafted you. You feel me? Look at that. Uh, get off of me. Yeah, get off of me, dog. Put, you see him push him in the back? Yeah, you ain't doing nothing. Why? Hey, let me go back to that part right there. You see him look at him? You see Shelvin push him in his back? Look, get off of me. You can't hold me. Get off of me. Push him in his back. Uh. You see turn around? Yeah. You thought about that one, Dell, didn't you? You ain't want no. You ain't want that. You ain't want that. I watch here again. Good pass rushing moves. Watch this again. Watch this right here. Oh, no, my bad. This is where he, he redirects the running back. It's the next play coming up. But still, even here, he's taking on the double team. You're not moving him. See him right here in the middle again. You're not moving him. Look at them. They're getting hyped. 23 hyping him up. Like, let's go. Let's go. Uh, look at that. They, they had they was double teaming him all game. They was double teaming him all year. That's what you want. If you single teaming him and you 350 pounds, you ain't doing your job. You feel me? You need to command that double team so you can keep these other guys free. But you see the read. Look, it ain't 64 falling down. You ain't moving. They, did they move him? No, they didn't move him. They did not move him. Now watch this play right here. <clears throat> Look at that. That that like that, see? But he don't have no pass rushing. If he can learn a swim move, he could a uh, a uh, a uh, uh, a swim, a uh, a uh, a uh, rip and uh, grab when he grab them and grab them pads and rip them down off you and get in there. A good rip swim. Get some arsenal in there. That's why he's training with Tuck. That's why he's with B Tuck right now. But look at this right here. Look at this play right here. Look, they all hyped over there because that man is causing that right here in that middle. Watch this. Look at that good. Look at that good quickness. That's good quickness. Three fifty. That's three fifty. All right. Look at that. That's one on one. Mm -mm. He's just driving that man. What we talk about? The he was said what he talked about in that video. I'm learning how to pass rush and get that push up the middle. This is what you want. If he can learn to get that push and get some pass rush moves with that, you feel great about that pick because now you're not one-dimensional because that's what he is right now. That's why I said Marvin Wilson, I like that because he can pass rush and he can stop the run. He can do both. You know, He's not going to be a sole one, but he can flex. And then a McNeil, a Liam McNeil, I like him because – he came in at 317, but he can hold up that run, and he can pass rush. He got five sacks in his junior year. He can offer that. Shelvin doesn't offer that right now, but if he can, I think he's even more valuable, even one of them, because of that size. But if he can incorporate this right here, look at that. If you can get some – get see, throw him off of you, dog. If you can get that pass rush ability, some moves, dog, you're excited about that. So that's why if you I, I posed the question, if you had a Lee McNeil, if you had Tyler Shelvin and you had a Marvin Wilson and you could not get any of these guys after the third round, you see the quickness off the ball. Who would you go with? A lot of people with with a McNeil. I'm not mad that choice. I did a video with him. I like McNeil. He pass rushes. He can stop the run, but he doesn't have really any pass rush moves. He's just holding up the point of attack. Him, he can ask the pass rush because he's hella athletic. Boom. You really love that. I told you about Marvin Wilson, but he's on the light side. He came in at like three oh uh, under three oh five. If you got this guy three fifty, I would say if you had the choice between them three, I love Marvin Wilson, McNeil with the size because you think maybe he can hold that point of attack more. But if you and Shelvin would be my last guy, but if Shelvin had pass rush moves right now, he would be my number one guy over them. If he had pass rush moves, but he doesn't. But if he can incorporate them. I don't know who if you would draft, he would be my first defensive tackle drafter first because he's only a one-trick pony. You better draft another defensive tackle to me. I think you need to get two. If you get another pass rushing guy <clears throat> or a guy that can offer you something at the three and you got him, I feel great. But look at this play right here. I believe this is a good play right here. No, this is uh, the next play, and then we're going to ride out on that. Like I think he powered up. Mm -hmm. He was powering up. Watch what he does on his next play, though, with him powering up. Mm 
biggest thing is keeping his weight together. For real. Look at that. Look at that play. And what was so great about that play right there, look, he got everybody hyped up. What's so great about this play right here? Watch this play. He's right over that center, but watch how quick he is with this move. Yeah, talk to the fans. Talk to that crowd. Watch how quick he is. The man, the guard doesn't even get him. Boom. Look at that. The center doesn't even get him. I'm sorry. Look at that. Too quick. The center doesn't even get him. Quick off that ball. We. That's what you want right there. Let's go back to that. Watch this. Whoop. That man falling on the ground. He looking for somebody to block. What I tell you about, you can't block him one-on-one. Well, I tell you, you can't block him one on one. That man is struggling. He can't block him one. He's too big for you. Boom. What are you doing? Blowing up that play. That's what you love, and that's what some cowboys need. Right there. Whack it. Whack it. Whack it. That's what Dallas needs right there in that middle. Some authority in that middle. Some doggish. Is he a, a super dog? I don't know. I need to see more. This is not him in these plays. I'm just kind of letting this ride out. I need to see more to see if he's really that doggy dog, Snoop doggy dog guy. But from what I'm seeing right now, I like him. I like Tyler Shelvin. Okay. I like Tyler Shelvin. So, hey, keep an eye on him. I think uh, since his pro day wasn't great, he can slide. Hopefully, maybe to a fourth round. That'd be great. i love to get a, a, a D tackle that could do both. I think if you could keep training him, he can do both. But right now, I don't think he's there. But, man, if you could get something from him, if you drafted from him later and got somebody before him and then you added him, woo-wee, now you got a coup right there. But this is my quick session. Another big game, James. As you see right here, another big game, James. If you like to cash app your boy, you see right there, cash app your boy. You see the the cash app name. Holla at your boy, man. It's another big game, James. Coach J Film Day session will be coming up with somebody else. I keep on saying for Tam, but I don't know why I'm not. I think I kind of like we already know Dallas to get him at 10 if he's available. But Tyler Shelvin, if he's around late, look at him. But it's another session. Tell me how you like the video. Give me a whole bunch of likes on this one, man, um, and the future videos to come. If you would like to become a member, as low as $1.99, we're getting those memberships up. You really want to get on that. So $1.99, as low as $1.99 to start the membership and become a subscriber. We love you over here. Goon Squad all day. Silver and Blue Nation, big game.